Yo guys, we're playing our second semi-finals in the Warhammer Eternal Strife tournament. This time we have the following players playing Kass versus Hank. Inspired won the previous semi-finals against the Bina France 2-0. And this is the altered melee game, Warhammer Eternal Strife, made by Nightmare2077. He's been working on this map for 13 years. And I had the fun little idea when I tried it to hold a tournament. I put out a poll for people if they wanted to play in it. They applied and he picked the players playing it. And here we go. Altered Melee means that it's not the original races. There's 16 other races, all from the Warhammer Fantasy universe. We have Soima fans, aka Cass. I'm just gonna call him Soima fans. Uh, did he leave because there's something wrong or not? But anyway, we'll continue. Uh, we'll continue, probably it's gonna be fine. We have Sorbian fans going with the um, uh, the High Elven, so we've seen those before. And the Empire by Hank. So that is going to be a new one. Now the Warcraft 3 Observer interface is not good enough yet to see everything the players are seeing. Just now, between the two semi-finals, I saw a little... I took a little look at the Vampire Count faction. And if you're looking at things as a player, it's going to be far more extensive in what you can learn about the racial mechanics than if you're watching as an observer. We see the units and heroes, how they work, but we don't see the great underpinnings of how the economy works. Vampire Counts was a pretty ridiculous race. I just looked at it. I mean, it was ridiculous in its extensiveness and its fantasy. It's super cool. You had to make corpses, which would then be... You would make corpses via buildings which would then be consumed by other buildings so that your units come out with full HP when you train them. Otherwise they would come out, I guess, desanguinated, hungry, as they are vampire counts. And uh, every building had mana and could cast spells and it was pretty wild. But we're going to be focusing now on the Empire. He's making a Grandmaster. The Grandmaster of the Knightly Order is a veteran of hundreds of battles and strong in his faith. Can learn the following spells. Orders Reinforcement, Shockwave, Master of Battle and Valiant Fervor. Meanwhile, making some Empire Archers. Also known as Huntsmen, Empire Archers are basic ranged units, may detect invisible units and effective against neutral hostiles. So they're good at creeping. Look at, the, look at their face. 17 to 20 damage. Plus 10. Plus 10 from what? Oh! When attacking a neutral, they get the plus 10 damage bonus. And then I guess if you give them a uh, non-neutral attacking command, they lose the bonus. Let me lower my keyboard scrolling speed a bit. If I can. Make observing a little better. Yeah, this is better. What's this? A knight? Minus two armor. More archers. The farms are huge. And they look really nice. Looks like it's a quick expansion. Armed workers have been called. Militia. Meanwhile, Soima fans has gone for Asa Goldmane, a ranger. Reaver bow attack damage plus six. Has an aggressive high elven farm and summoned high elf militia from here to do some creeping. The players are getting creative with how they're using these farms. And why not? That's two extra free archers with fortified armor, which is insane. As a unit. I know it's a summoned unit, but still. He almost killed his own sentry ward, attacking it with Asa Goldmane. Michael Weldock, the Grand Master, is here. Increases the attack speed of the bear by 15%. Sword of Righteous Steel. Look, he's making a high elf artisan. I didn't know farms could make artisans. May learn the Asur craftsmanship. That was some kind of shockwave. Is it coming out? There it is. It's 220 health. <laughs> 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus... Dead. Look at this. He's just ignoring them. He knows they're summonables. He doesn't need to kill them. Oh my god! It's a high elf farm rush! 
Use it! Use it or lose it. Meanwhile, expansion is finishing. A town is under this is Elven Town Hall. Is he tier one still? I think he is. He's rushing with fortified armor high elf militia. But it seems to me like they're not allowed to move. Oh, you can't move from where they are. And he's added them to the group. And he's finding that they can't move. And now they're not even attacking. Now they're attacking again. He just realized. But these spearmen don't look like any good. I feel like they're really weak for a tier one unit. We've got knights here against spearmen. And what I know from Age of Empires is that spearmen should win against knights. But look at this. It's not even close. Where's the brace bonus? Those farms look so good. Yeah, these farms look amazing. <laughs> Despawn. My people need me. Zip. So, uh, Soy My Fans is at 800 gold. He clearly had an idea of cheesing with these uh, farms, but <laughs> did not plan out his build order well enough. to have a lot going on at home. He's feeling overwhelmed by the pressure of being thrown into the Colosseum with little info against overwhelming odds. Someone that knows the map better already. Pikes don't counter knights. Well, they should. Wait, they win in Warhammer too? Oh, really? I thought pikes are supposed to be able to brace against horses. Or is that just compensating for the disadvantage of not being mounted? Not a counter, still loose, a little bit less loose. Pikes do win in War Armor? Well, there you go. Tabletop, they have a bonus versus large. How's this map called? Warhammer Eternal Strife. Grubby, will you ever play Rimworld? Oh, uh, Rimworld sounds fun. I, uh, I'm trying not to play it anymore because it's not productive for me to get hooked on it. But I played it a few weeks ago and it was so good. I love it. But sometimes love isn't enough. The town the is under are under Don't attack. tempt me, Frodo Baggins. Got a marketplace coming out. A shop from which any allied unit that has an inventory can purchase items. Got a town hall upgrade coming in. Meanwhile, soy my fans. I think he's still tier one. I've got a sneaking suspicion. He's not using his money too well. He did manage to do an interrupt on mining on Hank, which is nice. But he's on his last breath. He's hanging in the ropes. It's almost time for the judge to call a merciful end to the fight. Oh my God, he died. He TP'd and he died at home to the harassment. Oh no. Asa Goldmane has fallen. He's got nothing left. A very fancy looking forge though. A player's forces are under attack. I like the look of these farms, yeah. Power building a smithy for some upgrades, presumably. Empire looking sturdy. Militia barracks. He's got three of it. How, co how come this guard tower has all these bonuses? Plus eight damage, plus four armor. Under siege. Maybe it's upgrades. <laughs> the moment the high elf farm finishes, you can immediately make two militia. I do feel like there's potential in this strat. I kind of feel like trying this build. These units take no damage at all with three fortified armor. Can he even fire at this tower? Is he trying to take it down? I guess they always spawn on top. So it's better to be spawning on the south side if you want to do this cheese so you can attack northernly more easily. Yo, what's this? A free company militiaman. There's two types of attacks. Huh. 
Oh yeah, now they don't have the 10 damage bonus. Dude, he's got move speed and life regen. Unholy aura. Seed of rebirth. At death, the hero is revived upon death. What the hell? He's got double Ankh of Reincarnation. Even if somehow Michael Waldock would die, he would come back twice. It would be more correct to say pikes were used to counter cavalry for most of history. Yeah, technically pikes were designed to kill spearmen. Ah, GG. GG. It's a victory for Hank. And it wasn't close, but it was a cool cheese rush build by Soima fans. He just had to commit more to it. Or less. Go to tier 2 and come up with a second plan for a 1-2 punch. Or commit harder. Because Hank had an expansion, I think he had to commit harder. If he brought every excess worker to spam these farms and to make so many uh, militia, maybe he could have done it. Got an Empire handgunner come out here. Looks cool. Nice. GG. Yo guys, what's up? We're about to start the uh, second map of the semi-finals. And I thought it would be cool to ask the players what they are going to play in their match. And their answers was vampires and empire. So because we don't have time to see everything during a game, I just thought I'm going to quickly show you what the vampire faction is like so that you can get a little idea of what a player is going to be dealing with as he discovers this completely new uh, faction. So there is some kind of strange mechanic going on with the vampire count faction where you can make corpses like this you make them and then you aim them and then they appear there okay so that that's that's the thing from the corpse pit okay so now we've got corpses now how do you use them you can eat the corpses with this barracks like this from it it gains mana and then when it summons a unit the unit comes out with more health. Note how the first archer I made has 210 health and this one has 260. So there's this whole deep macro level of corpse creation and utilization. And that's not the only building that eats corpses. This blacksmith type of building, Harvest Death, uh, this blacksmith type of building called the Graveyard uh, can also harvest death and eat corpses like this which then gives it mana, which then allows it to upgrade things like attack and armor. This is just the tiniest look of it, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys uh, that. You've got the Von Karstein bloodline, Lamia bloodline, the Korkachov bloodline that changes how the game is played. Okay, that's it. For the rest, we're going to check in the game. But now let's take a look at the empire that we just saw in the previous game. And I'll show you guys that as well, so we can kind of see. Okay, so here is the uh, empire. Uh, we can also take a look at the different heroes. So you've got the Free Company Militiaman and the Empire Archer. Then you've got four heroes. The Grandmaster, which we saw. Then we've got the Captain, Blessed Strike, Animosity, Armor of Contempt, and Summon Great Swords. We've got the Wizard Lord and the Arc Lector. The light is with us. <laughs> it's Uther's voice. For the light. So what's he got? What's his ult? Channels a powerful spell that grants nearby allies 50% attack damage. If you're fighting against forces of destruction, the bonus lasts up to 60% to 70% against chaos, lasts up to 60 seconds. He's got the Hammer of Sigmar, which I guess has to be used on an opponent. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm not even showing half of what's possible yet, but I just wanted to show you guys a bit of a look. Now let's watch the game between Hank and Soima. All right, here we go. Vampires versus the Empire in War and Armor Eternal Strife. Here we go. It says I paused the game, I didn't. Oh, let's watch. Vampires. So we've got our zombie peons here in, and we've got the haunted manure. Able to construct buildings, mine gold, harvest lumber. Here we go. What are you going to do? What's he make? 
This race needs a PhD to understand. I actually think he's figuring it out on the fly. What a champ. Soima's dedication to entertainment, to give the people what they want, is truly unrivaled. The altar of Nagash and the skeleton crypt. There's the corpse pit. What did I pick? Aware. Oh, yeah, he, he's studying uh, astral charts right now to understand the macro. Uh, don't play this unless you're extremely high IQ, 120 and above. He's so doomed. Yeah. I mean, if like Hank just does another Empire Fast expansion, then I think Soima might be doomed. Because there's very little creative flexibility you have when your opponent Fast expands. It's like, well. You need to do a clean uh, all in now or counter expand immediately. Pre pre fast expand too. Usually when I do some of my like fun builds on the ladder, if the opponent fast expands, I'm like, well, I guess I don't really have time to rush tier three. Didn't look at the vampire count heroes yet. I assume they use the Lich model and the Dreadlord model. Maybe Archimand if we're lucky. Archimand model. Ah, and of course, Kel'Thuzad. He's going for the Master Necromancer, Soima. Potent spellcaster hero that specializes in maintaining and increasing undead hordes. In addition to Skeleton Brute, can learn the spells. Oh, he's got five abilities. Can learn the spells Necrotic Wave, Spirit Host, Necromancy, and Raise Undead Horde. And I guess we should see the uh, these skeletons not as a 400 health skeleton that's hurt, but just as a 200 health skeleton. A player's forces are under attack. Because, as we saw before, there's a corpse mechanic that the skeleton crypt needs to absorb corpses in order to uh, get higher health production. You can't do that at level one. Oh, it's Kel'Thuzad on a horse. And Militia. Combat bound zombie. Okay. Uh, but... But... A player's he doesn't have enough lumber. Attack. Haunted graveyard. Very little lumber right now. He's at 93. Uh, same thing by Hank. Hank is dedicated to make the most out of this opportunity. And is... Uh, Spamming one race with the fast expand. And uh, nothing wrong with that. Same hero. He does not. You know what he reminds me of? <laughs> Spartacus. In the show Spartacus. And uh, the gladiator too. In the show Gladiator. And what's his name? Owen Wilson? Or what's the actor that plays in the gladiator? A gruff Australian dude. Not Owen Wilson. Crixus? No. In the non-Spartacus oh, show, the film. Russell Crowe, yes. Russell Crowe. Ah, that's why I thought of Owen Wilson. I guess I knew it was something with OWE. <laughs> wow. You couldn't be more off. But, uh... Yeah, it's like Russell Crowe and Spartacus, right? They... They, they just win. They win fast. They go for the win. But... There's the Empire. That has to be entertained if they want to be a popular gladiator but i respect this are you not entertained what mod is this this is a custom map made by one guy and they and he made 16 races from the warhammer universe every race with their own 15 units or so and their own four uh, heroes. So that's 19. 19 times 16 is 304. I think he probably designed like 304 units and a whole bunch of upgrades that all of them can have, including major build paths via bloodlines and, 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 and alignment choices, new macro mechanics. It is unbelievably complex. I kind of want to see the Lizardman models to see if you put a Carnosaur model. Yeah, I'm curious too. Does it have a Warcraft twist or is it fully Warhammer? Well, <laughs> it's... This is Warcraft. <laughs> Inside the Warcraft game, so... 
that part definitely works. Right? Hey, what is this? A zombie, crypt ghoul. Uh, and secondly, there's gold and lumber, so that's a Warcraft twist. Right? Ziggurat of Death. Artifacts of Death. Corpse Pit. Haunted Menor. But he's not making any workers. We have a macro skill disparity here, guys. The good man is trying what he can. But it's like RTS skills from 2002 against RTS, RTS skills from 2022. Soima fans walked so that Hank may run. Nice shockwave. Got a lot of farms coming up. Usually, as the Chinese in Age of Empires 4, I, uh, I don't start farming this early. I try to get the boar first, the deer. This is a very early farm expansion, but it sets him up nicely for the macro uh, later on. I know I'm making like kind of random comparisons to Age of Empires 4, but it really feels that the breadth of economy management has been upgraded compared to usual Warcraft 3. Uh, seeing as how Warcraft 3 has two resources, gold and wood. But many of these races have three or four. I guess that's why I keep thinking about AoE 4. Because AoE 4 has four resources. Yo, that's some cool necromantic energy. Menergy, I almost said menergy. A little Freudian slip there. Do you like Power Thirst? With all new flavor of menergy? Ooh, new hero comes out! Goich from Braunschweig! <laughs> Dude, what does Braunschweig mean? The only place I know Braunschweig from is from that uh, film, The Lost Ticket, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am Arnold Braunschweiger. Oh, it's a place in Germany? Ah, oh, really? Surround! Yes! No! Yes, no! He had to surround the Michael Wild Dog. But he let him go. Who let the wild dog out? Oh, he's got him. He's got him. Close it, close it, close it, surround. Close it, close it, close it, close it, close it, close it. Close it. He did it. Nice. Soy my fans. I'm literally in brown strike right now. Really? The altar of Nagash. Dude, this night. Let's see. Four workers in the mine here. He's got 1,700 gold. Okay, there is still a chance for Soima fans. Even though his economy looks like it's in shambles and Hank is completely comfortable, also 2,000 gold. There is a chance. He needs to put people in gold. There's four here and there's four here and one guy isn't working. Okay, it's 4-4, four, four, so that's like 80% of the way there. If he has some super secret unit that is hidden OP in Vampire Count, and he just makes 10 of it. Some kind of flying monstrosity. I think that's his best bet. Oh, look at this. Dogs of War Camp. Ogre Wood Splitter. Ogre. And a crossbow mercenary, as well as a mercenary wizard. He hired all four mercs. No, wait, there's more. There's a Warhound. Oh my god, there's more than 304 new units. He's also done all kinds of new mercenaries. And summons. I think he probably designed like two, uh, 400 units or so. A weak close combat unit. Can it detect invisible foes? Long range siege war machine. Yo, why aren't we getting that? What's this? Recruit a regiment of regular troops. A regiment consists of three swordsmen and two handgunners. <laughs> Why is there a scaffolding around this state? Oh, it's a different barracks. Ah, okay. This is a state barracks. This is a knightly order barracks. My bad. Improved armor. Sorry, my fans is doing hardcore upkeep management. Still no upkeep. Actually attacking. I don't know what it is with this Tony today, that every time the player with the smallest army attacks first. 
We've got Shielded Graveguard with Chaos Damage, which is super cool. Another really good surround. Dude, if there was no TP, he would totally have it. Halfway there. Halfway there. Now, is Hank familiar enough with how to heal up his heroes? Because both of his heroes are low. Oh, there we go. This mercenary wizard just did a big heal. Oh my god, he's full life. I don't know, I guess he just had some corn from the farm. They're both completely full. But where are your units, dude? You've got 3,000 gold! Produce! They're not pro gamers. Zombie wizard. It's from the farm, yeah. A player's force are under attack. Oh, he found a boots of speed from this. So it is a it is a drop on the drop table in these maps. Okay, 65 pop. 48. Come on, 3000 gold, no lumber. No, you got to make skeleton archers they're so small. I think they literally get like four shot by a knight. They're so cute and small. He needs way more than just skeleton archers. 3000 gold, man. They're artifacts of death. No, you've already got one. We need some units, buddy. Soy my fans. He tried to study for the test. On the morning of the test, did not remember his math formulas. That's what ADHD will do to you. Saving it for last. Procrastinating. He just got. His future shockwaved. Michael Wildog, the Grandmaster, taking so many units down. He can't keep up with Hank's war machine. 65 population. There's knights, there's mercenaries, Empire hand gunners. Hepuel, the Dark Providence, Master Necromancer, is level 5 though. Hero wise, he's doing some good work. He's lost all his workers. Quick, use the corpses for mana. Yeah. Eat the corpses! <laughs> he did kill the hero. But for some reason he got no XP. Oh, he had a seed of... He had a seed of revival. Just came back to life like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I don't care. I'm gonna run away. You thought me dead? You wanted to raise my corpse? Raise this. <laughs> okay. Now, last chance, Soima. Units. Make them. Make them right now. 3,600 gold. There is another hero. All right. Vampire Count. A powerful vampire who specializes in the dark arts. In addition... Yo, Icy Bryce, thanks, dude. Are we talking bit boom yet? Not yet. In addition to horror, can learn the spells Somnia. Wait. Insomnia is can't sleep? Somnia means you can't be awake, or what? <laughs> or you're always asleep. Soul Drain, Cloud of Despair, and Avatar of Nagash. Scary, spooky hero. It's Kael'thas with a bloody chin. Yeah, he's probably a sleep inducer. Zero lumber. That's cool. It's Kael'thas in a little vampire count suit. Kocht the dark. Hey, I feel like this is very close to my uh, my core nationality. Oh, yeah, this wood splitter needs to get to work. Oh, he's under attack. TPing away. Still just making archers. This knight is tanky, it has nine armor. Third base coming up for Hank. Some kind of green beams going around. This uh, Goik from Braunschweig. Oh, hey, he's pretty good at surrounds, huh? There is a TP though. He's gonna need a stun if he wants to take him down before the TP completes. Maybe he can try to take down Rockvold the Hammerer. Nope, it does take down a knight. Honestly, 
Soima fans is getting the work done in the fights. And he's finally got some units of his own that actually matter. These Black Knights. I love Black Knights. <laughs> I've loved Black Knights for a long time. It's time to confess and be, be real with you guys. You may not have known this. You may not care. But I need the world to know I love Black Knights. I like Black Knights in Monty Python. And I like Black Knights in Heroes of Might and Magic 3. And damn if they don't look super fine here. Stats not too hot though. Th 24 to 32 damage. 400 health. Healable of course to 800. 3 armor. Now we look at normal knights. 33 to 45 damage. 9 armor. 875 health. Normal knights look better. I'm not gonna lie. Players forces are under attack. I'm not saying black isn't normal, but you know, alive, dead, and he needs more upgrades. Zero zero against two two. That undoubtedly makes a bit of a difference as well. Yeah, true. Rowan Atkinson in Black Adder. They are upgraded. Yeah. Still unupgraded. They're five armor, and Black Knights are three. What? What is this? This to me looks like a flame, a failed uh, flame strike. Is under siege. But maybe that's not what it is in this universe. That animation. It's something that Kocht the Dark is making. But I don't know what it does. Two thousand eight hundred gold. He's making more corpse pits. At your service. Have a good day, Grubby. Thank you for your stream. Thank you very well. Thank you very well, Mr. Daniels. <laughs> Cheers. Appreciate it. Oh, look at this. Warrior priest. Warrior priest. Look at him. What is this magic damage? Oh my god. He's got hero damage. As a normal unit. <laughs> I've never seen this. This is preposterous. Nine hundred HP. Yeah, just went for the haunted menor. He realized it was built on an Indian burial ground, and there was no way to save it. But where did those knights come from? Yo, we're finally getting some good buildings. Look at this, Chamber of the Undying. I bet this building is badass and makes some good shit. Look, Black knights. Where did they come from? Oh, from the skeleton crypt, I guess. Base trade, meanwhile. He's trying to do the same thing to Hank. Take down his main building. But I don't think the damage is equal. The Chamber of the Undying was cancelled. He is making another. I want to see what you can make. Maybe some air unit? This was a better game though by Soima. I'm kind of post-morteming it. Because I think... He has no TP on either of his heroes, any of the three. And he's losing the base race. So I'm talking in past tense about the game. There's so many knights here that he's almost losing against the second and subsidiary army. Well, maybe not quite. That is a lot of animation. Look at this, skeleton brute. <laughs> siege damage. <laughs> it's a uh, summon with siege damage. It looks so funny. And medium armor. He's leaving some units behind to trash the rest. Doesn't know he's up against two bases mining. Yo, Chamber of the Undying. Oh, he can't use it. He hasn't got any pits left. No food. Oh, we're going to have to check after this game what Chamber of the Undying does. I need closure. I need closure about what this could and would have been. That's not a lot of units. Ah, oh, there we go. It does a sleep. I think he may have been interrupting himself by accident on previous casts. I, I will say what though. Soima fans is good at surrounding. He, he's got the mechanics unlocked. But now his master necromancer is being attacked. 
His dark magics are not appreciated in this part of the empire. And he'll be sent to the afterlife forevermore. Counter surround attempt by Hank. He's not quite as gifted in it. Also doesn't have Somnia to help him out. But his macro more than made up for it. Trying to get the double surround. Almost has it. Now he has it. That's it. That's both heroes dead. GG. Soima calls it. Hank wins 2-0 and goes to the grand finals to face off against Inspired in a best of three. And we thank Soima fans, aka Cass and Dabina France for their participation. They both get $20. DM me your PayPal on Discord. And we're going to watch the finals between Inspired and Cass, aka Soima fans. All right, let's see what that Chamber of Secrets would have made. There's a Bone Dragon Valley that might have helped him. But also, the Chamber of the Un Oh, the Chamber of the Undying. That's the one he was making. So, what was our good man trying to go for? Necromancers? Wizards who act as servants of the vampires, tending to their undead armies. Initially knowing the spell Invocation of Nehek, later can learn Raise Dead and Hellish Figure. Let's get both of those. Okay, what does it do? Did I get all the upgrades? Wait, I can't because I guess I don't have enough corpses. Okay, we're just gonna have to imagine it. Heal target friendly non-mechanical wounded unit for 25 hit points. So it's like priest heal. Additionally, restore extra health if they're low. The caster summons one zombie warrior to aid him in combat. Blight bonus additionally summons a zombie. So it's two on blight. Increase the target friendly unit's attack rate by 40% in move speed. So it's like Unholy Frenzy, but with movement speed. Kind of like Bloodlust, I guess. Now you've got the Black Mage. The Malevolent wizards that draw on the wild energies of death. A sorcerer initially knows the spell Entropic Link. Later he can learn Soul Leech and Death Cloak. Unless the building has enough mana, the unit will be trained with fewer starting mana points. I see. I bow to your will. Curse target, causing it to lose its life energy. Its attack speed is reduced by 15%, movement speed by 30. If target dies, all nearby units allied to the caster will be restored. Oh. Can cast on self, would sooner cast it on enemy. And then you heal health and mana. That's pretty damn strong. And Tropic Link, link four friendly units to get in a chain, distributing damage. Oh, it's Spirit Link. De death laughing, Cloak. Happy. Less than three. Death clock. I mean, it, actually, it is death clock. It's an hourglass. Make target friendly unit invulnerable for 30 seconds, but after that, it will die. Dude, where did I see this before? Oh, yeah. The, the anomaly in Hearthstone Battlegrounds. No, I saw it recently in an. Oh, I saw it in this map. Ah, really? Ah. In this map when you played. Okay, okay. <laughs> a hero from the ogre race yeah i hate this kind of mechanic in games but yeah i guess it could be good this could be really good and cheesy and, and what's this zombie dragon zombie dragon huh leave it to me there we go An ancient, gigantic, flying monster with razor-sharp teeth and talons, capable of breathing, scorching gouts of flame over their enemies. What's its range? 450. More than the usual Frostworm. 1600 health, while Airborne suffers an attack penalty. Dude, what? <laughs> Taking extra damage from piercing too. Breathes at fire at enemy units. Oh wow, blue fire. Pestilential breath causes targets to have their attack speed reduced by 80%. Blocks six damage with each attack, scaly skin. Wow. And that's still not all, but we get a little bit of an extra look of what the vampire count faction is capable of that we just couldn't see unlocked in the potential of Soima's attempts. GG.